fifth graders. Welcome to math for today. Um, math this week is really going to be kind of targeted at our upcoming DDI, which is taking place on Thursday. So today we're going to be practicing. It's going to be guided. I'm going to guide you through a bunch of problems and then you're going to complete. And so the goal for today will really just be practicing. So I'll give you a problem. You're going to pause. You're going to try to solve it and then come on back and see how you did. And then you'll have a homework assignment as well that's going to mirror what we just practiced, okay? Similar practice problems. Then tomorrow will be your practice DDI, okay? So you'll have a chance to take a practice test leading up to Thursday is going to be the DDI itself. So you should have a lot of practice between now and Thursday and hopefully be feeling pretty confident about that DDI, this quarterly exam that you're going to take, okay? So for today, you're going to need your paper and pencil. You're also going to need your math resource binder um, for reference so that as you're kind of solving some of these problems, remember that you're allowed to use that math resource binder as a way to Make sure you have the right information. So with that in mind, I'm going to flip you around. And I'm going to be writing problems. And your job is going to be to pause and to solve them. So I'm going to have you round this number to the thousandths. So go ahead and pause. Come on back and see how you did. So remember, thousands, right? Tenths, hundreds, thousands. Everything to the left is going to stay the same, including the placement of our decimal point. However, this one's a little bit tricky, isn't it? Right? Actually, no, it's not. I spoke too soon. So then we look at our box, right? We put our box around here and underline to the right. And so we look to the right. We see that number and it tells us what to do. So four or less, let it rest, okay? Which means that this stays the same. And we look to the right, everything to the right of that box becomes a zero. But remember when we're dealing with decimals, we do not want to include these unnecessary zeros. So our correct answer here will be 372 and 839 thousandths. Remember as we're going, by the way, if there are particular problems that give you trouble, come see us during office hours and say, Ugh, this one was kind of tricky for us. Okay, so you're going to express, we've done a lot of problems like this, but three and three eighths as a decimal. And then this is important. Some of you have been struggling with this in homework and I don't think you've been seeing our feedback necessarily. As a decimal, correct to two decimal places, which means you have to round your answer. So go ahead, pause. Come on back and see how you did. So remember, when we're doing mixed numbers, that whole number stays the same, right? So you kind of want to put it off to the side, or maybe off to this side would be helpful. And then we're going to do our division, okay? So fractions are division. So 3 eighths we can express as 3 divided by 8. We're going to have to add zeros to do this. And if you've been doing these problems along with me, you should be getting comfortable with the fact that there's going to be three zeros. Anytime we're looking at eighths and we express it as a decimal, we're always ending up with three decimal places. So eight goes into 33 times with a remainder of six, and we bring down our zero. Eight goes into 60 seven times. Seven times eight is 56 with a remainder of Four, we bring down a zero and eight goes into 40 five times. Now, a lot of you have just been writing your decimal three, seven, five. But again, remember, correct to two decimal places. That means we need to round it. So we put a box around the second decimal place. We are looking to the right, the five, five or more tells us to add one more. So this becomes an eight. So the correct answer here is going to be three and 38 hundredths. I promise you that there will be an option on this test that is going to give you this and you need to not take this. You need to do this, okay? All right, please estimate. And remember when you're doing estimates, this is the feedback you've been getting from both Mr. Tom Haven and myself. Keep it simple, make it easy on yourself. You're 
limit should be something that is nice and easy and round. Don't make it extra complicated, okay? So let's do 66 and 6 tenths plus 66 and 666 thousandths. So you're going to pause and estimate the answer here. So again, hopefully you kept it simple. Round it to 70. I would not have rounded this to 67 and 67. That is not simple. That's still pretty complicated. We want you to round it to something that you can just add in your head. So I would round these to 70 and 70, and a strong estimate here is going to be 140. So now, hopefully, you've been kind of following along, and you know what to expect next, which is find the value of 66 and 6 tenths plus 66 and 666,000. So go ahead and copy this problem. Find the answer, come on back. The big thing to remember here, fifth graders, is that when we are adding decimals or subtracting decimals, the rule, you have to stack those decimal points. It's how you show your understanding of the place value, okay? So stack those decimal points, and then when you're adding, you're going to have to add some zeros in order to make this work, okay? And now we add vertically. So zero plus six is six. Zero plus six is six. Six plus six is 12, and we have to regroup that one. Six plus six is 12 plus one is 13. And again, six plus six is 12 plus one is 13. So our correct answer here is 133 and 266 thousandths. Now, some of you have been forgetting, you just did an estimate. So you should check 140 is pretty close to 133 and 266,000. So that's a good sign. Some of you have been doing estimates that are like 140 and then your answer here is like 1.33266, right? That should clue to you that there's like a problem that happened. Your estimate and your answer, exact answer should be pretty close to one another. Something to keep in mind as we're moving on to this next one, where again, you're going to estimate a subtraction problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. So go ahead and estimate, and again, keep it simple. Pause, come on back. So I see two reasonable estimates here. You could have done 72 minus 2, because that's absolutely something you can do in your head. Or 70 minus 2 is also a great estimate. I would accept either of those estimates. So 72 minus 2 would have gotten you 70, or 70 minus 2 is 68. Either of these estimates are great. And again, with subtraction, we can do that in our heads, right? 72 minus 2 is something you could do in your head. So that is a reasonable estimate. So now you know what's coming, or you should by now. Find the exact answer. So go ahead and pause. Find the exact answer. Come on back and see how you do. So remember, the same rule applies, that you need to stack those decimal points, okay? Which means you're going to have to add a zero. Then we subtract. Two minus zero is two. Three minus nine, we cannot do. We have to regroup. So we're taking from over here. 13 minus 9 is 4. Again, we cannot subtract, so we have to regroup. As 4 becomes a 14. 14 minus 9 is 5. 1 minus 1 is 0. 7 minus 0 is 7. So the correct answer here, you should get 70 and 542 thousandths. All right. So you're going to fill in, fill in the blank with the missing number. And again, we've done a few of these throughout. Okay, so we have our decimal. So what is the missing number here? This is equal to seven plus four tenths plus what? Go ahead and pause, come on back and see how you did. So hopefully you know that there should be a nine in this answer, but it's not nine ones. We have to show it's nine what? It's not nine ones, nor is it nine tenths, nor is it nine hundredths, it's nine thousandths. And so when you write this, you need to make sure that you're showing nine thousandths, okay? Showing nine thousandths. All right. 
We're going to arrange. We've done a bunch of Bs before. Arrange in decreasing order. Okay, so I'm going to write some. Fractions and decimals. So go ahead, you're gonna pause and you're gonna arrange these in decreasing order. So remember, fifth graders, decreasing order means you start with the greatest and go to the least. Always look at those whole numbers because that's gonna often give us a quicker solution. So four is our greatest whole number. That's going to be our greatest number because it is the greatest whole number. Now we look at our other whole numbers. Three and a third and three and two tenths. So what we've been working on is expressing these as decimals. And so if you're expressing three and a third as a decimal, it's 3.3 repeating, three, 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 three. So three and a third is going to be greater than three and two tenths, right? 3.3 .3 is greater than 3.2. And remember, when you're writing this out, you want to write it in the form that it came in, okay? This is also going to help this comparison because one third is 3.3333, right? So one third is still going to be greater than three tenths. So this is our correct answer here, okay? Again, if you're having a tough time with this, go ahead and come to office hours. All right, um, this one is a little bit different than what we've been doing up to this point, um, but we're gonna give it a try. And you'll see it today, you'll see it for homework again, you'll see it tomorrow on the practice test, and then you'll see it, I mean, not the exact same, but the same type of problems. So you'll get a couple chances at it. So eight books and three magazines cost $46.50. If each book costs $5.25, find the total cost of four books and two magazines. And so we kind of want to think about this problem in like two portions, okay? I'm gonna highlight to show us. This first part here is what we need to use. Well, I guess this first part here. So this portion is what we need to use to find out the cost of magazines. Because currently we're being told that a book costs $5.25. And then we have this total amount for eight books and three magazines. So if we're thinking about the number of books, we have eight, let's see, eight books. So we know one book costs $5.25. So now we have to find the cost of eight books. So go ahead and pause and just find this part, the cost of eight books. So in order to do this, you should have multiplied $5.25 by eight. So eight times five is 40, we carry that one. Eight times two is 16, plus four is 20. Eight times five is 40, plus two is 42. And then one, two, one, two, add that decimal point. So that tells us that eight books cost $42. So again, eight books and three magazines cost $46.50. So if we're thinking about this, including books and magazines, and we know what the eight books cost, we need to subtract those two. So go ahead and pause and do your subtraction. So $46.50 minus 42, and again, we have to stack those decimal points. You should have gotten $4.50. So that tells us eight books and three magazines cost this, that means this $4.50 is equal to three magazines. So now you need to figure out what one magazine equals, which you need to do by division. So go ahead and figure out what one magazine costs. So we should have divided $4.50 by three, stacking, of course, our decimal points. So three, goes into four once with a remainder of one, bring down the five, three goes into 15 five times with no remainder, bring down the zero, 
So that tells us that one magazine is $1.50. So now you should be able to go back and find the cost of four books, that's one book, and two magazines, because we know what one magazine is. So go ahead and pause, fifth graders. Find this cost, and then come on back and see how you did. Okay, so first we have to find the cost of four books. So $5.25 times four, you should have gotten $21, right? Four times five is 20, we regroup that two. Four times two is eight, plus two is 10, we regroup. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21. So that's what four books equals. Now we need to figure out what two magazines costs. So $1.50 times two, you would get $3. So the total, when you add these two together, 21 plus three, our total here is $24. It's a very multi-step problem, fifth graders, but just take it a step at a time and you'll get a chance to try this again in your homework. All right, 10 and 11, I'm gonna give them to you right in a row. We are adding mixed numbers. And we are subtracting mixed numbers. So go ahead, solve these two problems. Come on back and see how you did. So remember, as always, we start with those whole numbers. So seven plus five is 12, and then we wanna figure out what our common denominator is, which is twelfths in both cases. One fourth equals three twelfths, two thirds equals eight twelfths. Then we add our numerators to get 12 and 11 twelfths. We always check, is it proper? Can it be simplified? No, it cannot, okay? So 12 and 11 twelfths is the correct answer to 10. Now for subtraction, there's only one whole number, so that's going to stay where it is, and then we have to find our common denominator, which is going to be eighths. So 1 eighth is 1 eighth, 3 fourths becomes 6 eighths. We cannot subtract these, right? If you have one and you're trying to take away six, we can't do that. So we have to regroup. So remember, we make this improper. So four times eight is 32, plus one is 33. So we subtract 33 minus six eighths, which should have gotten 27 eighths. And we ask ourselves, is it proper? No, it is not. To make it proper, you should have gotten three and three eighths. And remember, if you're not remembering how to do that, you can do that division, right? Eight goes into 27 three times with a remainder of three. And we express this, again, we have our clock, three and three eighths. Remember, we go in a circle. Can it be simplified? No, it cannot. So our answer is three and three eighths. All right, we're gonna do some moving back and forth between decimals and fractions. So write, please, 75 hundredths as a fraction, and of course, should always be in simplest form. And then for 13, you're going to write four-fifths as a decimal. So go ahead and pause and do these two, whoops, and then come on back and see how you did. So remember, when we're expressing as a fraction, we look at our place value. Our biggest, or our smallest, I should say, place value is the hundredths. So we call this 75 hundredths. However, we need to simplify this answer. You could divide these both by five, you could divide these both by 25, but when you're done, you should have gotten three fourths as your simplified fraction. Remember, when we're expressing a fraction as a decimal, we remember that fractions are division. So we do our division. Five does not go into four, but it goes into 48 times with no remainder. So our decimal here is eight tenths. Okay, uh, 14 is requiring a line graph, which I don't have, but you'll get a chance to try that on your homework. See a line graph included. 
And then 15 is this question about mathematical properties, which we have not done a lot of work with, but you should have talked about in earlier grades. So the commutative property means that you can add or multiply in any order and get the same answer. The associative is very similar. It tells you that you can place parentheses anywhere, and this works for addition or, or multiplication, and get the same answer. And the distributive is where we distribute. We did this a long time ago. The distributive is where we look at our multiplication being distributed over the two numbers. So you could add and then multiply, or you could multiply each term by our multiplier and then add them together. These are equal to one another. And finally, the identity property has to do with multiplication and division. In other words, it means that eight times one equals eight, or eight divided by one equals eight. So you're gonna have a question on this test that's gonna look around this practice test on your homework tonight. That's going to look at these four mathematical properties that you've done a little bit with in past years and a little bit with this year. All right, so fifth graders, I really kind of whipped you through the stuff that you're gonna see on your homework and on your practice test and on your actual test. So again, use this to review, use your homework to review, come to office hours, use your practice test to review and study, and um, you'll be ready for Thursday, okay? Let me know if you have questions. I know we did a lot there in a short amount of time, um, but it really is good practice and hopefully we'll have you feeling prepared for Thursday. All right. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.